my next guest was the new success story in the Canadian music block. His album, Strange Animal, was a huge hit and he won numerous awards and teenage girls swooned and people screamed and it was awesome and wonderful. His name was Gowan and that was then. And today, this talented singer-songwriter has laid his keyboards to rest and he's picked up the guitar. The result is wonderful. Women now swoon and fall down. It's amazing how history repeats itself. His new album is called But You Can Call Me Larry. He joins us now to perform his first single and his first hit from this album. It's called When There's Time for Love. Please welcome Larry Gowan. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, w I was reading an article about you that was really fascinating because you talk about uh, um, some things that really struck me as important. And I thought of one of them as you were playing that you really are a musician. More than a performer, you, you are a musician, which means to me you, um, when you perform, it's the music that comes through your, the feeling and your knowledge of music yeah. as opposed to doing the... Yeah, do, doing the shtick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. It's, it's funny. I, I feel that um, in the last decade, 
uh, particularly with the advent of uh, the explosion of video, you had to do a lot of things to just draw attention to your music. You, you know? had to be a performer. And a lot, yeah, a lot of that, a lot of that had to come into it just to kind of get people's attention. His, it's a funny little history with pop music. Every now and then, it seems that we come back to a simple song, sung in a, in a straightforward way, seems to resonate more with people. And that's kind of the, the cycle that I think that we're in right now, and that's what's doing it for me at the moment. That's why Unplugged became so popular. That I think started that's that thing where we went back to our roots or whatever you Definitely call it. part of the reason, yeah. And, and even when I came out right now, a couple of people yelled out, you know, you played Grateful Dead song or a Who song. A lot of those bands wrote very straightforward songs that were very uh, e easy to relate to and didn't, didn't need a lot of extra... Right. Extra step across. The other thing that came through was that you, we have the piano here because this was an instrument that you played a lot and you went back to, to creating music on the guitar and you said mm -hmm. because the guitar took you to different places and because you, if you get so used to the language of the piano yes. that you go off in one kind of music language where the guitar is another thing That's, and let you... You've hit it right in the head. It really is just that with the piano, uh, you know, a lot of people probably know that, um, size, you know, like... That's an old song of mine that, that you see, I couldn't really sing anything but something fairly dramatic yeah. to that feeling of music. That's yeah. just what, that's what, God, that's what wind, and the to. universe, that kind of music. <laughs> yes, yeah. right. So, but I found that with the guitar, it's, it's like my second love, and in some ways, it evoked what you're saying, just different lyrical ideas uh, came to the surface and a different feeling. But I think musicians must get trapped sometimes by their own abilities. If you play a guitar yes. or any instrument enough, you tend to go off in, in kind of set rhythms or tracks and you true. keep following these, these familiar paths so you, do, you lose your creativity to a degree? That's very true. What happens is you get, you get into tried and true methods and I feel that uh, if I had you know, reworked or rewritten songs like Criminal Mind or, or Moonlight Desires, I think it would have just diminished their value and I felt somehow by saying, okay, I love playing the piano, but I'm going to just separate myself from it and, and try something entirely right. different. And a lot of this came from the fact that I co-wrote with other people on this album. Which I also, so. yeah, be, you do Bach, though. I mean, you do Bach, Beethoven. You're a classically a trained pianist. A pianist? Just pianist. Pianist. Ah, that's, that's Bach. Bach. That's I knew Bach, that one, yeah. yeah. Sort of Bach and ragtime here. Who is it that did that, made that kind of sound so um, popular, that particular sound you just made? Ah, uh, that was Ragtime. That, yeah, was, that, that was Scott Joplin. Scott Joplin is the name I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. that was that sound. Um, when you write music also, yes, because one of the criti criticisms, I guess, are the thing that often, not often, sometimes when I hear a CD, I'll hear the same sound. You know, you hear the same sound, yes. it's over, and mm -hmm. it's so familiar each song mm -hmm. that it's like it's just the same song 12 different ways, yeah, you know? Yeah, I know. I'm frustrated by the same thing often. But you said when you co-write with somebody, you yeah. get that synergy, that dynamic that takes you off again. Something about the human interaction. Again, the, the people that I, wor that I wrote with, Eddie Schwartz and uh, Jim Valance and uh, Annette Ducharme, these weren't people that were connected with my music in the past. And so they had a whole different set of criteria as to what makes a, what makes a good song. And so suddenly you've got, you're meeting strictly as songwriters and you're coming up with something that seems much more... Uh, fresh and new it really isn't uh, particularly reflective of either of your talents but something just that you've created yeah a whole new thing from the two absolutely the um but you gave up the keyboard you, you not at all not, no? not even slightly there's plenty of piano on this album i just found that in some ways the 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 what you were saying before about the 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 chord the chords that came and the melodies that came out of the guitar were a little simpler and i'd find that when i went over to the piano i'd go you know <laughs> I might not have come up with something like that if I began on the piano for some right. reason because, you know, your hands fall into certain patterns and, and you begin to... Uh, part of keeping music alive is keeping the little, that little child alive inside you that's really uh, um, curious about music. And part of, keep, part of right. changing instruments keeps that curiosity alive. If you go off as you have to the guitar and then come back to the <clears> piano, what you've been through, you come back with a new viewpoint, a new twist on it, and this it. will be new again. That's it. That's right. We have so. about 30 seconds left. The, um, the, the album is simply called uh, Call Me Larry. It's Lawrence Gowan, but you can call me Larry. Yeah. Maybe you could just play us out for a little bit. Sure. Uh, something else. We'll be back in a minute. Sure. What's this? this one's called Cry on My Shoulder. Cry on my shoulder. Afraid. This 
this world grows colder